I'm going down to the drugstore Buy a big old skinny yarn I'm going to knit me a kitten Even if you don't give a darn Hey guys, uh, welcome to this episode of the We Are Yarn podcast. My name's Amanda. I'm your host today. Thank you so much for joining me uh, in my craft room here in the beautiful East Tennessee. It is humid. It is sunny. It is 90 degrees Fahrenheit today and terribly warm. I had on a um, knit tank top that I had made several years ago uh, and I had to take it off. It was too hot. <laughs> but, um, it, or not really even hot. It's humid. Oh my goodness. We've had so much rain here in the last week. Um, I think record rainfall somebody mentioned and one of the lakes up here is so high they opened the dam for the first time and I think somebody said 25 or 30 years they had to open it to release the water. It's crazy. Do you have your beverage of choice? It's hot here so guess what? My coffee is ice today. I'm drinking out of my Saf souvenir mug cup. Ah, Alright so I uh, um, had the dawning realization that my baby was sleeping and my husband is not here today. It is Saturday, April the 29th, <laughs> and um, that I could sit down and get in a quick recording. I forgot the baby monitor, but he's just across the hall, so if he starts, if he wakes up, he can just yell louder and that'll be fine. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is show off a lovely bag. One of my bestest friends, um, Daniela Caffeinated Gert of the Caffeinated Crafting Podcast has opened an Etsy shop and I bought one of her bags. I actually, she showed us the yarn when she, the yarn, no, the fabric. She showed us the fabric when she was ordering it or when she got it in and I just thought it was the coolest. You don't see, I had never seen patterning like this and it's just so pretty. It is, um. that word. They have word jelly, jellyfish. Jellyfish? Isn't that fabulous? But that's not the best part. Check out the inside. She lined it for me with sushis. Ah, I love it. And wait, that's not even the best part. It has a um, coordinating little ring here. Yeah, isn't that awesome? But wait, that's not the best part. The very best part is that all of her bags have a piece of her hand weaving on it. And I'm sure she showed us when she was weaving this um, what it was, but I don't remember the yarns. But this is straight from Daniela Weaving, and that's the best part. So you should check her out. Caffeinated Craft Arts on Etsy. Beautiful little bag. Perfect size. It has some other goodies in here that are early birthday. And you're just going to have to not see those because I'm not in the mood show right now. <laughs> but thank you, Daniela. Um, it is a very beautifully sewn bag. Um, I don't think there's any interfacing in it. If there is, there's maybe there's light interfacing because it does stand up, but it's not so heavy that, you know, you can't fold it over and shove it down in your bag. So, while we're talking about lovely people, the project, the new project, I don't have anything finished today. Um, the new project I want to show you is living in my Twist Fiber Studio bag because the lovely Ashley helped me choose one of these yarns when I was in Asheville. This is my Celadon. So are you familiar with the Celadon? This is an Amba O'Brien pattern. And again, my I'm running out of red ink, so everything is missing its red. But this is the Celadon. And, um, it's a lovely side-to-side -side shawl. I used to not like side-to-side -side shawls whatsoever. Um, 
I think the one is it called Saroyan that's knit with worsted weight yarn from side to side and it has a leaf along the edge. That was my first one and I barely made it this far and I was over it. And then the next one I tried was that one, if you recall, um, I think Oncoming Storm is the name of it. And um, it's side to side with beads and lace and cables and it was just too much and I made it almost halfway through. But I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. It just, but the last side to side shawl I made was an Amba O'Brien pattern. Min, Mindy, maybe was the name of it. Um, and it just zoom, zoom, zoomed. And I don't know why her side to side shawl patterns just seem so much nicer. I don't know, but they're fabulous. So this one, you start with, you know, kind of like a neutral. Well, I guess you start on this side with a neutral. And then you work through a gradient set is what she intends for you to do. And then you end with that neutral again. So I had this gradient set already. Uh, um, you remember my fundle, my, <laughs> my fun bundle from last week. I loved the way that it was packaged so much because it makes, makes it portable and easy to maintain. So I bundled my dragonfly fiber gradient set that way. Uh, I think this is the Jenny sock, or maybe it's just their regular sock base. I don't know. Um, but this is the Cheshire Cat. And I went ahead and balled up that last one. So see, I'm going to be starting with this very dark blue. And it gradiates into this kind of sea foam mint sort of color there. Yep. Alright, the yarn that the lovely Ashley helped me choose... I didn't realize it was the sport weight until I bought it. Funny enough, this pattern calls for sport weight. But, you know, the yarn here is the Dragonfly's fingering. Guess what? This girl isn't concerned. So, here it is. But I just, it just dawned on me how much... Yeah, I have 400 meters, so that's over 400 yards, right? I'm, I think I'm good. Sporty Merino, Hedgehog Fibers. And this is the, oh, this is the colorway not safe for small ears. It is the Damned Nation colorway. <clears throat> okay, so Damned Nation is brown, this chocolatey brown. And I was, I was having a hard time. I was thinking gray, but not gray, and I couldn't decide. And um, because gray would be beautiful with this dark, but I didn't think gray would really be fabulous with the mint. But brown is fabulous with the mint, and I also thought it was beautiful with that blue. So, Ashley hit the, I mean, nail on the head. Spot on. I had kind of tossed around using a gray on the dark blue end and then on the mint end putting a um, coral and having two colors for the ends but um, I couldn't just find that perfect coral so but this brown is going to be amazing and I have been plugging along on this for several weeks now, well since the week after March so yeah three or four weeks now and um, I had to restart it several times because I kept losing my place. Um, and I would just, you know, I'd be like this far into it, you know, rip it out and start over. It'll be okay. So, it is garter stitch. You start down here. It does call for a size 5 needle. And I used a size 5. I actually bought size 5 needles for it. Yeah, these are the ones I bought. They are no longer in the bag. But I bought some Haya Haya's while I was there in Asheville. They're bamboo circulars, size 5. And um, I didn't like the fabric I was getting with the 5. I could tell that once it got washed and blocked and the garter stitch grew even a little bit more, it was just going to be too loosey-goosey. So I went down to a 4. I don't know if as I'm maturing as a knitter, if I'm getting looser in my gauge because I was... For a long time the needle called for is the needle I would use and it would be fine but um 
I'm thinking I might be getting just loosey goosey. Not a bad thing. So it has these series of increases that makes it so that you have this one edge that eventually stops growing. This is your spine. You can see that stitch. And then the bottom section gets longer and longer and longer, and that creates your point. I um, moved to my size for, these are Knitter's Prod, fixed circulars, minus fours. They're the green ones. Yeah. And um, this hedgehog, okay, so this is a brown, right? It's just, it's brown. And it's taken me until now to get bored with the brown. So that, has, that says something big for hedgehog right there. And the sporty merino is so, it's so squishy and soft. It's amazing to work with. It does, maybe it could use another rinse after its vinegar bath. But it, it doesn't bug me. But some people, that bugs. So that's just, you know, tossing that out there. What I did end up doing to remember the end that was growing without, because this section from the spine out here is getting so long, by the time I get to the end, I forget if I'm on the front or back. I know, right? So, I have a little progress keeper that I just clip close to the end, just to remind myself which side I'm on. And then I have a progress keeper she tells you each time you do this decrease to move your progress keeper up to that stitch, but that's too fiddly. I, um, I can feel it coming as I'm knitting. I can feel when I'm on the back side because I can see very easily when I'm on the front where my decrease is. Um, it's when I'm on the back of my work that I miss it. Um, so I just move it up when I no longer feel it going by as I'm working, you know. So I'm working along, working along, knitting, knitting, and I feel it. I'm like, oh, I'm getting close. And then I can pay attention for just, you know, that many stitches. <laughs> and then get back to my happy garter. But it's a beautiful pattern. I am something like 20 rows still from getting to put this in. And it just, it, I feel like I should be closer, but. This is going to be half the shawl. I'm going to be to the, or very near half the shawl. I'm going to be to the um, angle of the triangle, you know, before I add my color. If you look at the picture, see the, the color gets added right when you start the decreases. So I don't know why I thought that this end would be really short. But um, the Hedgehog is amazing. It's my first time using it. I'm really looking forward to diving into my Dragonfly because I always enjoy working with their yarn. And um, yeah, Ashley's fabulous. Her bags are amazing. All right. Now, um, you know, I said that in this season four that I would be, um, I would be, mixing it up and showing you different projects every week so that I wasn't just showing you the same thing over and over and over and over again. This is a repeat from last week just because I had a question about it. And um, I didn't feel like I answered it when I got done typing out my answer. I went, that's not, that still doesn't make a lick of sense. So, person who asked a question on YouTube whose name I now I can't remember. This is for you. All right, so to remind you, this is my very aptly named Fundle My Bundle. This is a fun size bundle um, from Lux Adorn Knits. I don't know why it's taken so long for it to, I think I'm a little shaky today, I'm sorry. And that's taking it, making it take a while to focus. So it comes with a pattern on the back, Lila Chevron Cowl. All right, so um, this is the colorway Simplicity. And um, all of my yarn is balled up. I'm on the final color. I'm about to get to the point where I wrap back around and start at the beginning again. Okay, so 
what I said last week is you do a provisional cast on and then you knit 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 with this amazingly soft and beautiful yarn it's cashmere okay so you knit 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 and remember I'm working on the likey driftwoods they're um, fixed I got these at my LYS the hook and needle here in Maribel beautiful shop adorable lovely people if you are ever visiting the mountains you need to make a stop as you're on your way through and um, visit her shop anyway so I did a provisional cast on knit 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 so it's almost this long it's going to be double that right because it comes back around so what I had said is you do a provisional cast on and then when you get done you kitchener it together and she said okay doesn't a kitchener together to make a hat Yes, yes it does. However, I'm not just going to be kitchenering the end together. What's going to happen at the end is you loop the two ends together and kitchener it back this way so that you make a loop that direction and then the, your head goes through there. Does that make sense? Is that better? Um, I hope so. Okay, so I want to remind you that if you do want to make this lilac cowl, Obviously, you do not have to use this amazing yarn, but I would recommend it because it's amazing yarn. Um, my brain just stopped. Do you ever have those moments where you're just going, 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 and then all of a sudden, nope, not doing anything else. We are done. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so I am you know, getting right about halfway through that final stripe. And then I'll go back and pick up the brown again and work back through it. Okay, so things I wish I had done differently. Can you see there's not much of a difference between this gray stripe and this gray stripe? Now that it's done and in the sunlight, like if I held it, hold it up at the right angle, I can see it. But if I'm just looking straight on, it's very difficult to discern. So I wish... When I realized that was happening, I had just pulled that middle gray out and done the darker stripe and then the middle gray so that there was an obvious change. That's the first thing I wish. Okay, and yes, I know I could rip it back right now and do that because it's knitting with beautiful yarn. Win-win, I got to do it again. Just more minutes per penny, right? But anyway, so... I'm thinking, I'm wondering, because I did go down a needle size on this too, uh, because I didn't like the fabric on a five, and the five is what it called for. I, um, sorry, I thought I heard my baby, but I did not. Um, I think I'm concerned that I'm going to have a lot of yarn left over, and that it's not going to be nearly as long as the sample was in the store. It's already not looking quite as wide as the sam that I'm recalling the sample was in the store. And I guess I could look at the pattern and see what the pattern says the width should be. But I feel like I'm going to have to block this pretty aggressively to get it to be just like it was in the store. However, when I held it up to my neck earlier, I was like, no, it's actually pretty perfect. So I may not. But I am considering when I get to the end, if I have enough of each color left, doing two rows of each color in a chevron so that it won't be it'll be just a little bit taller than these so instead of let me find a spot instead of that tall it'd be like that it's a little bit taller and then having two rows of each color just to have just to use up all of my beautiful yarn and um and then i thought that add a little splash of something different so if I have any left over, that's my plan. And, you know, I'm horrible about... Uh oh, I dropped the ball. Uh, um, I'm horrible about weaving in ends, and usually that would drive me crazy. Um, but, like I said last week, in this pattern, you don't have to weave in your ends. You just tie it together and go, because guess what? It's going to be inside your tube, which is going to be 
an infinite tube at the end, no one will ever know your ends aren't woven in, and it'll be your little secret. All right, so I hope that answers your question, and I hope if anyone else out there was like, I don't understand, but I don't care enough to ask, I hope that answers any of your questions, and now you can see the progression of the colors all worked up. I um, realized after I was well into recording that I had not turned on any lights, but it is such a sunny, gorgeous day. I think the sun coming in the windows is plenty of light. I hope you guys can see everything okay. I'm going to bend out a frame now to pick up the ball of yarn. You can stare at my stash. Be right back. All right, and just to remind you, because I'm trying to be a good podcaster, this is being housed in my Girl with the Rabbit triangle bag, which I love for putting in my diaper bag because I can fold two of the corners together and it's like super flat. I love it. Okay, finally, I'm at 20 minutes now, but um, and I know I'm trying to be here. You do what you have to. Um, I am, I usually don't do make-alongs, guys. I usually don't do mystery knit-alongs, mystery knit-alongs, because I did one once with some beautiful, uh, color-changing cotton, Vola's color-changing color cotton, and, um, I learned how to do the linen stitch, and that was really cool. And then I got to the edge of this shawl, and it was feather and fan the rest of the way, and I do not, I don't enjoy knitting feather and fan, and I was, it was not a shawl I would have chosen if it had not been a mystery. I wouldn't have chosen it, period, and I ripped it out, and I was very disappointed that I lost all that knitting time, but as I'm sure you've heard, Hohi Locatelli is hosting a mystery knit along, and I want to make everything that she has designed, ever, it's all beautiful, every last design she has. So, I have total faith in Hohi. Now, you know, too, that I have this beautiful stash, and I want to use it. And so, I, um, one day, I sat down, and I looked at the chatter thread. The chatter thread for the Mystery Knit Along. Um, people are posting pictures of what they want to use. And Hohi has been responding to every single one if she thinks it would work or not. I know, right? So, that's super helpful in my, oh my God, what am I going to use brain? And it really opened up a new set of doors for me because I saw all these different people and someone had um, a skein of yarn similar to one that I have and the colors that they put with it, I would have, I would have never thought to put the colors together. When you see it, you're going to be like, well, duh, Amanda. But, I don't have, and everybody's always like, you choose great colors. I'm like, no, I don't. The dyers choose great colors. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> so, let me show you. And I also had to give myself permission to use some of my most special skeins. So, let me show you some of my most special skeins. Because um, these are, these two are, um, I've been holding on to them because they really are precious. Um, so this one's from Daisy Knits, and this is her hybrid bra base. It's a superwash merino, 50% and 50% tinsel. Isn't that nice? It's a gray. This is Thinking of Mel. I've had it for ages. And then I've also had this one for ages. This is a Gale's Art. This is her, um, MYS. It's a merino yak silk blend right? And this is copper. It's the colorway. I had plans to make a single colored shawl to wear um, to work in that sort of thing. I had to literally, I had to be like, Amanda, it is okay to use it. Use it. Gail hadn't stopped dying. She still carries that base. You can get more. Use it. <laughs> okay. And finally, after I got done looking at my variegateds, I decided that this was going to kind of be a poppy of color. Because we need color. 
Uh, this is a Superwash BFL nylon blend from the lovely Amanda of the Color Wheel Yarn. This is her Caribbean Sea colorway. And this is the one that I was like, oh, duh. Okay, so those three. Now, <clears throat> also I have a black. Uh, from someone I don't remember in a colorway that I don't remember. Uh, I think I bought these to make socks for my husband. It was a Game of Thrones reference. Um, John, no. Blackfish. Blackfish? So those are my three solids. Now she has said flat out they don't all have to, like, your one other than the very, the ones other than the one speckledy variegated one they don't you can use three variegated speckledy ones just you know you got to make sure you have enough anyway, if you have questions about what you chose go to that chatter thread post a picture I guarantee you she'll give you her permission or maybe suggest replacing one because she's amazing all right, so this is the one that I would have never dreamed of putting with this blue. Are you ready? This is Zen Yarn Garden in Glitter Sock Clay Sand Colorway. Right? I mean, look at that. It's going to be amazing. And I think this is probably the one I'm going to go for. I think this will be the most wearable for me. And I don't know why it took me seeing someone else with a similar variegated to this. And I think they ended up using a darker blue, but I really like that bright blue. Okay, but I have other options. Also, a precious skein. This is Twist Fiber Studio. This is the Ashley Show. <laughs> and this is um, her Merino Nylon Cashmere Base in the Magic Mountain colorway. See, wouldn't that be lovely? And that Caribbean blue kind of pulls out the blue and the variegated, and then, but that brown still looks nice with it. See? Yeah. Or, this is a precious skein. Wait, it may be the Gale's Art, too. This is even one of her really old tags. That's how old this one is. I got this as a club colorway. This is, was a tri dye club. January 2012. I've had this five years. This is Emerald Hummingbird. And see it has that, like the Caribbean blue and then that brown. Isn't that lovely? I just... I really think this one would be more wearable for me. But they all have such different personalities, and they're all beautiful, and I can't decide. My only thing is this one has sparkle in it. None of these other bases have sparkle in it. I think if I end up going with the sparkle base, instead of using this black, I'm going to use... This black, which also has sparkle. This is as old as the hills, too. This is Kitchen Sink Dye Works. You know Mercedes Tesarevich Clark? She used to have a yarn dyeing business. Now we're talking like 2011 probably for this one. But yeah, if I ended up, yeah, I think let's go ahead and hold that up again. Just so that I have two sparkles Maybe this is what I'll do. Maybe this will be it, guys. What do you think? I think I'm down to this one or the hummingbird. Ashley, yours is beautiful, but I don't think it's right for this project right now. I just don't know. Tell me what you think. And with that, I'm going to go because I'm at half an hour. And remember, I wanted to keep it at 15 minutes. We all go into the yarn shop going, I'm not going to buy any yarn. <laughs> Okay, guys, um, love your faces. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to me babble on for half an hour. And I will see you, hopefully, in a week.
take care. Happy knitting. I hope it all goes as you planned. I just can't wait to finish. I got the kitten knitting blues. No, I just can't wait to finish. That's why I got those kitten knitting blues.